Anything we do in a grade is triggered by either an opportunity or a problem. An opportunity is anything that allows us to guide or to engage the eye. And a problem is anything that gets in the way of this. A shot mismatch, a color cast, an overexposure, etc. Now it's my goal when I'm grading to spend as much time as possible on seeking and leveraging opportunities and as little time as possible on dealing with problems. Why? Because while it may be my job to deal with problems, it's not really what I'm being paid for. When you go out to eat at a nice restaurant, are you paying for a problem-free plate or are you paying for an excellent dining experience? Understand, I'm not saying it's unimportant to address problems. I'm saying it's important to address them quickly and effectively so we can focus on opportunities. This is one of many aspects of our craft that's been tainted by its roots in color correction. Our culture and our tools are still skewed toward the idea that our central task is to correct. Not only does this distract from what's truly most important, it's actually subtly false in and of itself. When we're grading and we're having problems come up, we don't want to deal with them by correcting them. We want to deal with them by neutralizing them. What's the difference? If you're on a road trip and you start to lose pressure in your front left tire, your car is going to begin to pull to the left in that direction. And you might correct for this problem by cutting your wheel a little bit to the right. In fact, you might even finish your road trip holding the steering wheel at one o'clock instead of at 12 o'clock. But I think we can all agree that the solution, the way to neutralize this problem is to pull over and get some air in that tire. So how do we apply this idea to our grading? I'm going to give you the roadmap today through a sequence of questions you can go through whenever you encounter a problem. Question number one, am I correctly mapping from my camera color space to my display color space? What the hell is mapping? Mapping is the way we move from the broad range of light and color that a camera can capture to the narrower range of light and color that a display can reproduce. And it's the foundation of any grade. Now, if you're feeling your way through this or you're doing it by hand or you're blindly trusting it to some random LUT, you're going to be consistently plagued with problems, namely clipping in shadows, highlights and in individual colors and poor color reproduction, like skin looking too red or too yellow. But if you take the time to learn the basics of color space and color management, you're going to be rid of 80% of your problems before they ever even appear. So this is always the first stop whenever you encounter any problem. Am I correctly mapping from camera space to display space? Question number two, was the camera rated correctly for the light source? This one can feel a bit tricky to sniff out, but it's really just a question of a little bit of experience and paying attention to the context clues. I'm going to give you a couple of common examples. Let's say you're looking at a daylight exterior and it's skewing super blue. What's likely happening here is that your camera was rated for tungsten light rather than daylight. The ideal solution here would be to apply a mathematically correct Kelvin color temperature adjustment to zero out this mismatch. Here's another one, a practically lit interior that's skewing greenish yellow. What's probably happening here is you're looking at a fluorescent lighting source on a camera that is rated for a daylight source. Here again, the ideal solution would be to apply that mathematical color temperature adjustment to bring the image in line with the source. The variations here are endless, but my point is that a technical problem like this is ideally solved technically. This is going to get you better results faster, and unlike a subjective fix, you're going to be able to apply this same solution across all affected shots. If you'd like to know more about how this would work practically, let me know in the comments. Question number three. Is my grade itself the issue? If you've already begun grading when you notice your problem, it's always a good idea to go through each node or adjustment in your stack and confirm you're not the one introducing the problem. If you are, you're probably getting too aggressive in your grade and you need to back it off, or you're using too tight of a qualifier and you need to open it up. Remember the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. If you can't find a way to make an adjustment without introducing a problem, you're better off dialing it back or skipping it altogether. Question number four, 
is my display reliable? If you're not working on a well calibrated display, you're in for a lot of frustration. Why? Because there's no way to tell whether the problems you're encountering are in your material, your grade, or in the monitor itself. This doesn't mean it's impossible to eke out a decent grade, but you're going to have a lot of trouble isolating problems and you're going to end up spending a lot more time on them than they deserve. Question number five, what's the simplest possible solution? If you haven't found your culprit in any of the preceding questions, it's time to break out manual adjustments. Now by this point, any remaining problem should be fairly minor and you should be able to attack it with a broad, simple adjustment. If you're not able to get it done with your primaries, it's probably worth taking another lap through this list and seeing if you've missed something. I hope this gives you some practical tools for dealing with problems in your images. We all know how easy it is for a grade to be derailed by a problematic shot or scene, but I think it's even easier to forget that the real battle isn't just addressing these issues, it's doing so quickly and effectively so that we can focus on the true mission of our work, crafting beautiful images.